Good evening and welcome to a Star Race Tips and Tricks videos. Uh, I have, as of right now, too many hours in the game. Not near as much as say Senki, um, or Stack, or Cody, or a lot of other peoples. But I, I have a fair share, you know? And I've accumulated itty bitty bit of knowledge, you know? Because the SSC... It's a trap. Hey, you... You will not escape the SSC. You will either be repelled from the SSC, or you will be ensnared for life. It is... Truly a harsh place. Which you just, you cannot escape. Hmm. However... If you too, like me, are stuck inside the SSC, then I have some I have some tips for you, which can maybe help you out. And if some of these apply for outside the SSC as well. Quick disclaimer, there is there is no rhyme or reason to the orderings. I'm trying to keep everything semi-grouped together similarly. So I kind of just came up with the order on the fly. There is there is literally no reasoning why one is one. One is nine, one is ten, etc, etc, etc. So without further ado... So the first tip is take your, take your generator and uh, put the button on state value. It'd be like 20 or 21 or so, because that will go ahead and save you a bunch of fuel. Alternatively... You can go ahead and put uh, one of these on, which is the Yolo device rack, as well as a basic Yolo chip, and put on that code. It's also going to be in the description. And then, hey presto, you have optimal battery efficiency. Or well, I guess generator efficiency. It'll save you a lot of fuel rods. Trust me. Tip number two. Uh, use the insurance transfer. If you don't know what an insurance transfer is, it is these panels. As far as I'm aware, there is one at the marketplace, the one with the big holographic shops now open inside the easy build over underneath one of these bridges here. There's also my favorite one, the ship design, which is also underneath one of these arches. So go ahead and bind yourself, click on an empty slot, and then bind, and then hey presto, you can press escape and insurance transfer. Uh, small disclaimer, soon TM, whenever you insurance transfer, then you're gonna drop all your items, so make good use of this while you can. They are also on every origin, so theoretically, you could go ahead and, and get binds to every single origin. You could just zip around. As much as you want, except Station 22. Don't go to Station 22. Tip number three. I think we're on number three. Tip number three is for ship refuelment. Say you are stuck in the middle of space. Uh, however, one of your friends is coming with spare propellant. You're probably going to need one of these. Which is... Quite simply a refueling station as such. All you need is on one end where you're going to input your full propellant tanks, then you need a support of whatever size tank they're bringing which will be which is connected to a hard point with pipe. It needs to be a pipe, it doesn't have to have power. Editing munch here, uh, they, the hard points need power. Both both of the hard points need power to go ahead and operate. Just clarifying that because I don't think past me even knew that. But back to the video. It's just a pipe on its own network as it is here. And then connected to a resource bridge. This resource bridge, you want the flow in state to be 1, the flow out state to be 0. That way you can differentiate. And then the state... The state is whichever one it is. Now that we have defined that flow in, 
is 1 and flow out is 0, then what you want to do is set the set the propellant tank coming into your ship to be out. We'll set it to be 0. The reason being is because you're going to hook up your propellant tank to here and it's going to flow out of this tank and into your ship. So if we have 1 and 0 over here, though you want this to be flow in, so since flow in state is 1 and flow out state is 0, then you'll set the actual state state of the resource bridge to be 1. And then you'll just connect to 1, link it to the other, take your propellant tank, press C to enable snapping, and then hey presto, you will need to go ahead and put at least one bolt into it. So then it will go ahead and drain from this tank into your ship. And hey presto, you are no longer stuck in space. And tip number four. This, this is more of a general info and less of a tip. However, that is, uh, is where all the ores are and their relative and general distances from the origin stations. So for instance, you have zone 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, each of them at different distances away, and each of them containing different ores. Tip number 5. Say you are crafting a bunch of items, in this case 180 small hydrogen tanks. Well, if you want, then you will still be crafting whilst you are in the SSC. So you all can't see this because it's behind my webcam. However, if I am to move my webcam, then you can see that even though we are inside the SSC, right over there, we are still crafting up. Propellant tank. Another propellant tank. Yet another propellant tank. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite good, so that way you can at least be crafting something whilst you're in the SSC. And not, you know, doing absolutely nothing. Tip number six. Say you were building a ship. If in this instance, it's one of my larger miners that I'm working on getting built. However, something which is very, very useful is if you press tab, then you will swap between mouse mode and free look mode. Get in the habit of using both. Whenever you're in free mouse and you hold right click to move around. It is amazing because you can just get super, super precise, say, bolt or cable placements whenever you're moving around and trying to place down bolts. However, whenever you want to move your camera, then press tab and go into the free camera mode. The reason being is because Say you're in this camera, free mouse, and you hold right click and you try and drag, then you're just gonna accidentally delete a bunch of bolts. I know this all too well. Tip number seven. In a somewhat similar vein as well, you can see that whenever I'm moving around, I'm using my scroll wheel to move. So this is this is just me using my scroll wheel. The reason for that is because my camera is slower. You have no idea how much of a help it is to slow down your camera. Because you can easily get into super, super small spaces. You know? Just get the perfect bolt or the perfect cable. How you will do this is right up here. I used to go and go into settings, spaceship designer, camera. However, I just recently learned that you don't even have to do that. You can just go into the camera and just change everything. Your move speed, your drag sensitivity, your wheel sensitivity, and then your ambient lights. So say if I if I take my camera speed up to 64, then uh, we go fast. This, this is just me holding forward. I personally like to have it around like four, you know? And even then, I, I'll slow it down a bit. The other sliders, um, drag sensitivity, 
goes ahead and controls how fast you drag left and right. Go ahead and can I control Z? No, I cannot control Z that. The wheel sensitivity, if we turn that up, controls how much your scroll wheel changes the camera position. And then your ambient lights will go ahead and change brightness so you can make everything super bright and get absolutely zero shadows which some people like i believe uh i think it was i was either stack or cody who told me about that for the first time however i kind of like a, a couple of shadows you know it was a bit dark where were they before oh dear Tip number... Oh, I'm already losing track now. Uh, no, we're on eight. We are, we are on eight. Since we are on the topic of general movements and stuff in the SSC, learn hotkeys. These up here, they all have hotkeys. For instance, one is moving, two is rotation, three is... Mouse? Though I don't generally use mouse, I'll just default to number one. Then you will have four as your bolts, five as your cable and pipes, uh, six as your durability, seven as your snap tool. We're going to have an entire section on that in just a minute. Seven, or sorry, eight being the socket tool, and we're going to have another section on that in just a minute. And then you will also have your pain tool, which has no hotkey. Your auto bolt, however, is hotkey nine. We're also going to have another section on that in just a minute. And then material has nothing, welding has nothing, and uh, decal apparently is G? Since when? And then, uh, <laughs> sorry, I got sidetracked. Uh, another two really big hotkeys you have is up here. Your transform tool auto snap is shift C. I have used that hotkey near as much as I have used the move tool hotkey because more often than not, the snapping tool is more of a bane than it is a help. Like, look at this. Look at this circle around here. Auto snap did me no favors. I did that all freehand. And the second largest one right here, the transform mode. Oh my, you have no idea how good it is to have it. So it's a uh, it's numpad plus. However, I have went ahead and rebound one of my mouse keys, specifically my forward thumb key, to go ahead and change. So I can just go ahead and press a button on my mouse to change it, and I use that button all the time. It's probably one of my excluding right and left click. It is probably my most clicked button. On to number nine. We said that we would get to the snap tool in just a minute, and here we are now. So, for instance, let's say that we have two beams here. You know, straight beams, we'll just use two 72s. And say in this instance, they're, they don't want to snap. I don't know why, they don't know why, Frozen Byte doesn't know why, and the SSC is not telling. Well, Use the snap tool, hotkey 7. Because what you do is you select the part that you want to move, left click it, and select the orange box. Then go over to the part you want to snap to. Uh, I will often right click it because it makes it a bit easier because you can move away and look at other stuffs for a little bit more time. Otherwise, if you don't right click it, then it's, uh, it's a bit of a pain. However, Take a left click, select the orange box, have it turn green, and then come over to the part that you want to turn it into, or paste it into, and then click. And uh, hey presto, it's it's amazing. You can also do it for like, say this top box, and then the other dude's box over there, and then, oh, it's, you can even do that. And uh, you may ask, why would you want to do that? And we're, we're going to show you in just one second. Number 10. The second has passed, and now we're going to show you why you would use this. So here, 
we have uh, let's use let's use a 192 beam and we have a plate you know say we have 96 by 96 plate you know that we're trying to snap onto it what we want is we want this edge to be in line with this part of the beam however it's 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 not wanting to do it you know it, we can shift c and get it in line though it's not friendly you know it's not user intuitive it's a bit of a pain well what you can go ahead and do say we move it up a bit go ahead and take yourself a 24 straight beam it can be a 24 straight it could be a 24 special we'll use the special for now go ahead hotkey 7 select this tool so we need a little bit of space over here select the corner of the 24 centimeter and snap it to the center of the long beam what this does is you can see with the snapping points you can see why this plate will not snap to this straight beam because this corner there's no snapping points on the side of this beam it's only in the center however since we have 12 centimeter offset this bit of the beam from this bit of the beam we now have a snapping point right in the center which now means that we can go ahead and snap it in perfectly incredibly useful because now you can just go ahead and move stuff back and it's all it's it's all lined up just mwah. number 11 Getting back on track on the hotkeys and related sort of stuff, uh, if you hold spacebar, then you can pan, or you can hold middle mouse and you can pan, which is very useful, as you saw over here, where if, if we say want to get just, just the right amount in there, then you can just pan on into it, and it, it makes life really easy, because in Hey Presto, you can, you can do whatever you whatever you want. Panning is incredibly useful. Number 12. Where is Muppet going? This is a good question. So we've already briefly touched upon that you can press the hotkey too and then you have the rotating gimbal where you can move around. Uh, a, you can go ahead and use your tool options and change the degree of rotation. You can also easily go ahead and just type uh, numbers in here, like say 81 or 7 or 6, even, which makes life super easy. Uh, alternatively, though, you can use X, Y, and Z to rotate it. Just tap on the buttons, and it will rotate. Piece of cake. Which is also really good, which... For instance, you can go ahead and have a pseudo mirror. Say you have this and you kind of want to mirror it on the other side, then you can just copy it. Shift. Here's a, here's another tip. Uh, whenever you have your arrows, hold down shift, click and drag. And then you can double tap Y and it's in. You can also double tap X as well, which is sometimes needed. Yeah, it's uh, It makes life a lot easier than just having to use the rotate tool, you know? And did we did we give a number for the last one? Number 13, because I don't think we actually said number 13 anywhere. All right, here we have two separate things, and we're gonna go ahead and select the welding tool. Uh, there is a big difference between apply to selection and apply to all. And in all honesty, this should have been sooner in the video. Apply to selection, we select one side, say we select the welding tool and we hit apply to selection. Whenever we click, only whatever we have selected will be welded. The other thing, it won't be welded and then we can control Z to undo this. However, in stark contrast, apply to all, you click and everything is welded because, you know, it's applied to all. Similarly, if we do 
the auto bolt, then there is also the apply to selection, though unlike the weld tool, then there is no apply to all because by default it is applied to all. Number 14. Modules are great. And actually, if we uh, undo and bring these up, what you need to do to go ahead and have modules is you just highlight whatever you want. Up here at the very top, click on create. Hey Presto, you have a dot. However, you may not have a dot, and there is a very good reason for that. Go into settings, go into spaceship designer, and then go into modules. By default, at least from what I know, it's only root modules. Go ahead and change that to everything. And then you'll be able to see the green dot. By clicking on the green dot, whoa, you, you can move it around the place and not have to select literally everything. Just green dot and move it about. The other great feature of modules is you can click on the save module, which up here you go ahead and just up high. And then you can go ahead and pop it into pop it into a folder and and it's good. It's in the folder. Even though it kind of honestly the module folder thing is kind of broken at the minute. Frozen Byte is on it, don't worry. It'll it'll show up every now and then, you know? It 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 does. Don't delete these folders though. Whatever you do, if if you see duplicates, do not delete them because it will delete all of them. So don't delete the folders in, in your modules. Number fifteen. Say you build cursed ships. Well, there is a brilliant, brilliant thing you can do. For instance, you just have you have a tiny gap here, and you don't know how to fill it, and it's just it's really bugging you. Well, if in the case your ship is painted black, this will really only work if your ship is is painted black in this case. Do you see this right here, the socket tool? It is the... It is so underrated, not because what it can do, though because of what you didn't know it can do. By selecting one side, you can go ahead and duplicate it, and just move it around however you want. However, the advantage it has no collision box. You can have it totally intersecting everything. Not only that, the when it is painted black, you can't even tell it's a socket. Any other color, you can you can easily see that it that it is just a socket tool. Except or black. So, going by that logic, if you just quietly inset it into here, move it around. Hey presto, they can they can intersect with everything. It doesn't matter. Then, then it's just it's great. Just go ahead, take it, bolt them in place. And and it, it it just works in this instance, and we need to also bolt the other side to, of the two connected with hotkeys as well. F five, F five will enter and exit the yes the C though it's just okay. Granted, whenever you have your flashlight on, then it kind of ruins the effect. But whenever you don't have your flashlight on, then. And it's kind of just like a, a black or black, you know? So smooth. It's, it's so smooth. Oh, you have no idea how many times I have used this. It, it makes life so, so good. Number, I think we're on 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, no, maybe now we're on 16. Oh, editing, editing Munch is gonna hate me right now. Oh no. <laughs> Your beams probably won't be f be fitting correctly, you know, especially, especially if you use these special beams. So be very glad that you have the symmetrical versions. Us closed alpha players, we had the, we had these. These aren't symmetrical at all. And it's, oh dear, they were a pain. However, uh, say you have just a, a really weird gap, you know? Just, uh, say you have this gap. This right here. You're not able to fit a 24 centimeter in there. It, it just doesn't snap. You know? And... It, it just won't work, and you may be super frustrated. However, if you disable snapping, then you can go ahead and just slide it into place. These parts, especially the 30 degree parts, have a lot of tolerance for anything being just crammed on in there. So you can, and then you can weld this. You can just weld this and it's it's perfect this also goes or if you say have or if you're trying to trying to fit something in here though just nothing nothing's quite working like the, the 96 it's not gonna fit maybe if you get a 48 in there then now it's the 24 just also won't fit and in this case as well it's there's, there's not enough tolerance here. Well, let's do the same thing for this. Just drag it down until it's red. Until it's red, why aren't you dragging? Drag it down until it's red. Then try and fit this in. And if that doesn't work, here's, here's something else that's truly great. Just stack 24 centimeters on top of each other. Just go until... Ah, you also you can't do this. This this one it seems is a bit too small. Okay, if we modify this a tiny bit, then you can see that if you stack them and if you stack and squish them enough, and it gets easier the the taller gap you're trying to space, then this just works. Number eighteen. <laughs> I'm getting less and less confident. Uh, the more and more we go. Oh dear. This one, I don't really have a tip for you. Uh, or I don't have an explanation, though. If you want to make your ships look good, one of the greatest tips I can give you is to, uh, just throw angles onto it. Just add more angles. Make your, make your cockpit at an angle. Give wings. Give depth. Especially wings. Wings make everything look good. In, in Starbase. For instance, that's uh that's that ship that you're looking at is called the Beep, uh, because it has B in it. And it's it's a small fighter craft which I made at the final days of Closed Alpha. That thing has a lot of angles, and it also has a lot of wing, as you can apparently see on the side. And it's at least in my opinion, it looks pretty good. And it it has very, very few straight edges on it like there is you you wouldn't believe the amount of cursed stuff that is inside it probably number 18 or 19 at this point i think i've truly lost track <laughs> radiators actually i need to build something for this uh okay after a little bit of time of getting this set up we have on the left side a radiator which is it's the standard radiator you know however on this side we have a radiator completely enclosed so this is to primarily demonstrate that radiators they they can be inside you know they can be completely concealed and everything's good actually let's quickly bolt this up for 
dramatic purposes, I guess. You can see that we have bolts. Everything's bolted. Uh, the fuel right here. There, it's dropping. Over here. Also dropping. And, and yeah. Radiators, they can be inside. They don't need to be on the outside of your craft. They could be just neatly tucked away on the inside. Safe and sound. Quietly humming away. You did not know radiators could be inside, though you did now. Oh, though you did know they are more efficient while moving. Ah, I didn't know that. A tip which I just learned from chat. Radiators are more efficient while you move. Good to know. I haven't confirmed that, though. Coming straight from Twitch chat, which we are recording this while we're live. Because, why not? You know? I get to stream, I get to record videos, and this is great. Or at least the, the third to last one. I have no idea what number it is now. Editor Munch knows. Thank you, Editor Munch. Uh, box thrusters, they cannot be tiled. For instance, if you put these all on this side and you just connect one one hard point up to them, which we can do right now for demonstration purposes at least. Uh, only this thruster is going to be powered. Now the complete opposite is the triangle thruster, which can go ahead and be tiled as in as many different ways as you want, if I could actually get it. Rota rotating stuff is, is hard. Yeah, in this case, if you were to take one hard point, on the back here, both of these would be powered and propellant, and it works in as many different ways as you can tile them together as long as they're, you know, touching. Like, even like this... If you get these, then this also, if you only connect this bottom one here, all of those, they're also going to have propellant, unlike the box thrusters. However, there is, this is more than likely a bug, though I don't know if it's a bug or if this is intended. However, if you power and propellant one box thruster, you won't be able to hook up another box thruster, though you can apparently hook up a triangle thruster. And the triangle thruster will also work, though I would advise not using that for the main reason I'm pretty sure that's a bug. And instead of a feature. Do what you will with that information. But yeah, if uh, if you want to go more in depth into the thrusters, go go over to Senki's video. I've linked it in the top right. Because it is so good. So high quality. And it goes into much more detail than this little tidbits will. Go, go check it out after this. Like, seriously. Apparently this is number 20. Editor Munch can confirm or deny that. And the final one, if we quickly pull up the generator small, is what is what efficiency modules do. So efficiency modules, they're pretty damn expensive, you know? The tier one isn't that bad? Where it only requi only requires Aegisium, Cutonium, Arcanium, Carasium, Exarium, and Carnite Crystals. Which sounds really bad. However, when you look at the fact that Tier 2 modules require Lemurium, Cutonium, Arcanium, Zalium, uh, Exorium, Carnite, and Lucium, then all of a sudden the Tier 1s look a lot more appetizing because as far as I'm aware, no one has found Zalium yet. And... I think people have found Lucium, though I haven't checked the auction house as of recently. And, and then just for the for the, 
for for the shits and giggles. Enhancer module tier three takes Wamirium, Cutonium, Arcanium, Zalium, Exorium, Carnite, Lucium, and Ilmatrium ore. I don't think anyone's found the Ilmatrium ore either. However, what do they do? Well, coming straight off the wiki, because what? Well, why not? Then you can see that a tier one will only affect the module that it's touching. Tier two can affect two. And then tier 3 can affect 3. Um, only fuel chambers, and apparently cooling racks, gain efficiency from the enhancers. And one enhancer will provide a 50% reduction. So tier 1, 2, and 3, the, their only difference is they can shoot out a longer line and affect more stuffs. However, really you only need one in, in enhancer module. So with the 50% reduction in fuel and coolant, then one fuel chamber can power up to six generator units instead of the usual three. Two enhancers provide a 60% reduction for 7.5 generator units per one uh, fuel chamber. And then three enhancers gives a measly improvement of, well, in total 63.6%, .6%, so that's a 3% improvement. Though, it does give you 8.25 generator units. But really, all you need is one enhancer module. All you need. <sighs> and, uh, that's... That is, as far as I'm aware, the tips and tricks and general information that I know inside and out of the SSC. Oh, there is one more outside the SSC. Um... So I guess final bonus one. How to spot the the massive asteroids. We're talking the 130k kilovoxel asteroids. And um basically as far as I can tell you, you are looking for a dot which is larger and moving slower than all the other dots. If you all want a dedicated video on that, then I can give it. It'll be like three minutes, probably. Though, that's gonna that's gonna take a, a little bit of time to film. Yeah, if, if you all want a dedicated video on how to spot the 130k roids, just let me know. And I will go ahead and make that. And hopefully quite soon. Because, well, you, you all probably know my schedule by now, and it's... I will quite often just vanish for a month or two and, and then post a random two minute video. Huzzah. Anyways, I, I hope you all have fun. Oh, uh, I am kind of obligated as the leader of the bees to tell you that if you want to join a company in Starbase, which I, I can recommend, then join the bees faction. We are, we are a lot of fun peoples. Basically, we're, we're all just a bunch of friends, you know? We have Canadians, we have English, we have Americans, we have, I believe, a couple of Swedish and, and Belgian and Germans as well. Like, we have all sorts of people in the Bs. And uh, B stands for Bolts Engineering Excavation and Shipyards. And we have uh, quite a bit of fun in there. With, with that, I hope you all learned something. And, well, have fun. Anyone know how to get out of the SSC? I'm still, I'm still stuck, stuck here. here. Aimlessly, there's, there's no way out. out. Anyone? Anyone know how to get out of here? Oh.